About a year or so ago, I made a video on the top 10 easiest mounts to get. And in this video, I'll be going over 10 more mounts that are obtainable in ways that don't require random drop chance, and can be obtained with a little bit of grinding or camping, and that are also easy to get. And at the number 10 spot, we have the Marks of Honor PvP mounts. All in all, you'll be able to buy 7 unique mounts with 15 Marks of Honor each, 6 from your faction's capital, and one from Wintergrasp, the Black War Mammoth. PvP Marks of Honor can be obtained randomly from boxes you get from winning battlegrounds. You get 5 when you complete the weekly battleground event, 5 for completing the bi-weekly PvP brawl quest, and a few other scattered ways to obtain them, including one rare Legion Order Hall mission that sometimes pops up that will give you one as a bonus reward. Or if you farmed up a whole bunch of them in Legion when World Quest still gave them and have a whole bunch lying around like I do, you can just go to the vendor and buy all the mounts instantly. Now what makes these mounts easy to get is the fact that there's no random chance for them. You just need to save up a currency and buy them whenever you want. And there's no real rush either. These mounts have been around forever and always cost whatever PvP currency is currently available. As I bought all of mine back in Wrath of the Lich King when honor points were still the form of currency instead of an experience for your honor thing. And at number 9, we have the Disk of the Red Flying Cloud. In order to obtain this mount, you need to be exalted with the Lore Walkers. Luckily, getting exalted with this faction is really easy, and can be done in under an hour from neutral. To get exalted with the Lore Walkers, all you do is go around Pandaria and click on little scrolls out in the open world. Now, there's a ton of these scrolls, and you have to click on basically all of them in order to hit Exalted. But once you complete a series of them, you'll be meld an item which will give you a quest to turn in, which then gives you a ton of rep. And once you've collected all of them, it is exactly the amount you need in order to hit Exalted. Now, I have an add-on that basically just pointed me to exactly where I needed to go for all of the scrolls to be clicked on, but this option isn't really available for the normal player, but thankfully, there is many guides on the internet that will show you exactly where you need to go. And I'll have a Wowhead guide linked in the video description below. Once you fly around Pandaria and click on all the scrolls and listen to all of Lorewalker Cho's storytelling, you'll be able to buy them out basically immediately. And it's really simple to do. And at number 8, we have the Dark Moon Dark Water Skate. This mount is only obtainable during the Dark Moon Fair, but unlike the other mounts in the Dark Moon Fair, it doesn't actually cost Dark Moon Fair tokens. Instead, it costs 500 Dark Moon Dagger Maw Fish. And the way to obtain Dark Moon Dagger Maw Fish is to simply fish anywhere in the Dark Moon Fair. Any level of fishing works, and every cast will get you one fish. And you don't need to fish from pools. Fishing from pools, though, will sometimes give you an item which will contain multiple Dark Moon Dagger Maw Fish, but it's really not worth your time running around looking for pools. The best way to fish this up is just to sit down somewhere and fish in one location until you have 500 fish. You can also buy the fish on the auction house if you want to save yourself some time. For this video though, I decided to fish them all up myself to see how long it would take. And while having an anime on my second monitor and fishing on my main monitor, I was able to do it in 4 hours. I was honestly expecting it to take a lot longer than that, but it really wasn't that bad. And then once you have the 500 fish, you just go to the vendor and buy it. Just a note, this is an underwater only mount, which can be either a detriment or a plus depending on who you ask, because there isn't really that many underwater mounts in the game, so it's nice to have an alternative. And at number 7, we have the Bone White Primal Raptor. In order to obtain this mount, you need 9,999 bones from the Isle of Giants. And the best way to farm bones is to just go around the island and kill literally everything you see, as all the NPCs on the island, except the faction-specific NPCs, drop the dinosaur bones. You can also buy the bones on the auction house, but 10,000 bones is quite a lot, and there wasn't really that many on the auction house when I tried to lessen my load when farming the bones myself for this video. All in all, I casually farmed bones for about 15 minutes a day over the course of a week, with some days doing much longer than 15 minutes, and it only took me so long because I faced so much competition. There are so many people on the Isle of Giants for some reason, but I think it's because they're there to farm the world boss but I also had tons of competition just killing the normal dinosaurs as well. I have a friend who also farmed the mount at around the same time I was trying it, and she was able to do it all in one day by server hopping to an RP server, which didn't have sharding in lower level zones. So that might be an option for you if you want to farm all the bones yourself. One of the great things about farming this mount 
is while killing the mobs for the bones, they will sometimes drop an egg, which will hatch into another mount. While doing all of my farming, I got two eggs, and both had a mount in it. This egg has a chance to give you one of three mounts, but unlucky for me, I got the same mount twice. So while farming the guaranteed white primal raptor, you also have a chance at getting the black, red, and green primal raptors as well. As well as a whole bunch of pets, because these dinosaurs also drop a ton of raptor pets like candy, which is actually a really good pet in pet battles. And once you have the 10,000 bones, you simply go to the Kuma the Bone Collector NPC, who's located in like the only cave on the island, and turn in the option for the quest, a mountain of giant dinosaur bones, and he'll give you the mount. Number six, the riding camels. These are two camel mounts that can be obtained for 100 gold each when hitting exalted reputation with the Ramka hen. And what makes these mounts especially easy to obtain is the fact that you can simply buy a tabard from the quartermaster once you hit friendly with the reputation, and then go run and spam Cataclysm Dungeons. With a tabard, all kills of mobs and bosses in Cataclysm Dungeons will grant rep to the Ramka hen. So if you wanted to, you could do a rotation of all the heroic dungeons once per day. Or, you can just head over to the lost city of Tolvir and run it on normal mode and then just reset it, and then run it again. Since you can reset a normal dungeon 10 times an hour, you should be able to farm this particular dungeon infinitely until you have the amount of rep needed. The reason I chose Lost City of Tolvir is because it's a pretty short dungeon. It all takes place in a small area, and running back to the entrance after killing the final boss is really fast. Whereas a lot of the other Cataclysm dungeons require much longer runbacks to the entrance. Now I'm not saying this is the best dungeon to farm rep from, but it is a good one. Then, once you hit Exalted with the rep after a few hours of farming, you can just fly back to the Quartermaster, which is in the same zone as the Lost City of Tolvair, and buy your two camel mounts. Now, unfortunately, there are no other reputation mounts from Cataclysm that are as easy to get as the Riding Camels. There are other reputation mounts, but they do not have a tabard that allows you to run dungeons to get rep for them like you can with the Riding Camels. Number 5. The Secret Finder Mounts Secret Finder Mounts are referring to the mounts which require incredibly cryptic clues and puzzles to solve. To have you go around the world and click on a whole bunch of really random things in order to get that mount. Luckily, the only really hard part about getting these mounts is when the Secret Finding Discord first tries discovering how to get them. Once they do figure it out, many different websites and YouTubers basically fight each other for putting out a guide first on how to get it as well. So there is tons of information on the internet on how to get all of these mounts. And if you just follow other people's instructions, you get a guaranteed unique mount at the end of a couple hour long cross-continental journey of finding random things adventure. Now, you do have to do some work to get them, and some of them require solving a puzzle on your own. But at the end of your efforts, you're rewarded with a guaranteed mount, which makes these mounts very fitting for this list. Getting some of these mounts by just following a guide is honestly sometimes easier than collecting 10,000 dinosaur bones on the Isle of Giants, for example. And there are so many steps involved in pretty much all of them that going over them would be longer than this video itself. So instead, I'll just have a link to a wowhead guy that has all of them listed, so you can just look them up yourself. Number 4, the Winter Spring Frost Saber and the Venom Hide Ravasaur. Both of these mounts are obtained by doing 20 days of dailies. The Frost Saber is the Alliance version, and the Ravasaur is the Horde version. If you do one or the other, you will be rewarded with the other one. For example, if you obtain the Winter Spring Frost Saber, all of your Horde characters will automatically obtain the Venom Hide Ravasaur and vice versa. That's why I have them both clumped up together. Now, as to which one is easier to do, that's without a doubt the Winter Spring Frost Saber. The Venom Hide Ravasaur has an introduction quest, which is actually really hard to do on a max level character, as it takes place in Ungro Crater and requires you to get poisoned 20 times by a low level mob, who will only poison you when you hit it. Sometimes. So you have to hit the mob multiple times in order to maybe get poisoned. And on a max level character, you'll be one-shotting the mob every time. And even on a level appropriate character, it still took me 30 minutes to complete the quest. And I can't imagine how long it would take on a max level character, even if they took off all of their gear and punched it. And I doubt many people have 50 alts on their account at random different levels to just go to Ungro Crater with a level appropriate character alt like I could. But with the Alliance version and the Winter Spring Frost Saber, you basically just start on your dailies right away. 
and the dailies are really easy to do on a max level character. They usually just have you go around and kill things, collect things, or have your little guy jump on snow puddles or something. Same thing with a raptor. You go around and kill things and feed things to your raptor, and after 20 days of doing the dailies for your little guy and having a few materials, you just turn in the quest and you'll get your mount. Number three, the Tanan Diplomat. In the process of getting this achievement, you can potentially unlock five mounts. Tanan Diplomat is the achievement required for Draenor Pathfinding, the meta achievement that allows you to fly in Draenor. So it's a pretty useful thing to get. And the reason I chose Tanan Diplomat is because you can get this to Exalted if you just buy 21 medallions of the Legion. So it's a really quick rep grind if you have tons of money, as each medallion usually goes for around 10k on the auction house. Otherwise, you can just farm it like normal by doing all the quests in the Tanan jungle and then doing dailies. Now, for the mounts you can obtain, getting the meta achievement will unlock the Soaring Sky Terror mount, which is one, getting exalted with the Vulgen Headhunters for Horde or Hand of the Prophet for Alliance will unlock the Death Tusk Felbor at their Quartermaster that you can buy for 2500 gold. Getting friendly with the Order of the Awakened unlocks the Corrupted Dreadwing mount, who does require 150,000 Apexus Crystals to buy though. Apex Crystals do drop like candy in the Tannin Jungle, but the best way to farm them would be to do your daily Apexus quest from your garrison. You can also buy those missions from the Quartermaster in front of the main hub in your garrison. Your shipyard should routinely have missions that give two to 5,000 Apexus Crystals each. A lot of rares drop Apex Crystals, Killing Kazakhs gives a thousand. Basically, you gotta farm crystals, and there's tons of ways to do it. And for the Saber Stalkers, there are two boar mounts available. But these ones require their own special currency that's not as abundant to farm as Apexus Crystals. You need to farm Black Fang Claws, which only drop from mobs associated with the Saber Stalkers rep. So to get it, you're just gonna have to kill a whole bunch of mobs to get the 6,000 needed to buy both mounts. Number two a combination of three Burning Crusader rep mounts. The Kurinai, the Maghar, Cenarion Expedition, and the Shatari Skyguard. Getting three of four of these to Exalted will net you 14 mounts. The Kurinai and the Maghar both have eight Talbuk mounts available at Exalted. The only difference between them is their faction tags. Getting Exalted with the Kurinai is needed for the Alliance, and getting Exalted with the Maghar is needed for the Horde and getting both of them to Exalted is done in basically the same way. You just need to do every quest available to them, and then once you run out of quests, you just farm beads from ogres in the grand. Depending on your competition, you can farm enough beads from ogres in as little as four hours, but realistically it's gonna take a little bit longer than that. In my experience of farming old world stuff for mounts for this video, there is always people out there farming for mounts, no matter how old the content is. Once you get Exalted, you can just buy the 8 Tal Bucks from the Quartermaster for 100 gold each. The Cenarian Expedition only has one mount available for its Exalted reputation, and that's the Cenarian War Hippogriff. At one mount, it's a lot easier to farm than the 8 Tal Bucks, because all you have to do is like 5 quests to unlock the ability to gain reputation with the Cenarian Expedition, and then you can just head over to the Heroic Underbog and kill trash and reset the dungeon until you've hit Exalted. Just make sure not to kill the bosses, otherwise the trash won't respawn when you reset the dungeon. The Shatari Skyguard rep at Exalted will have five Nether Ray mounts available. In order to get this faction to Exalted, the quickest way to do it is to do enough quests so that you unlock the quest World of Shadows and the Dailies. Then you go out and kill Skedis Arakoa until you have six Shadow Dust, which you can turn in for an item that will allow you to enter a Shadow World, full of mobs that give you the rep needed. And grinding the rep involves basically getting this buff, killing as much things and collecting as many items as possible for the duration of that buff, and then getting enough shadow dust to get this buff again. This is actually a lot of mob grinding, but I thought I should mention it with the other two that are a little bit easier to get, just because it's also located in Outlands, and technically can be done in a day. A very long day though. Although, speaking of Outlands, there's also the Netherwing faction, a much more difficult reputation to grind than the previous three that rewards you with six Netherwing drakes at the end of it. I wouldn't exactly call it an easy mount to obtain though, but I felt I should at least mention it here since it's only a little bit harder to gain than the other ones. And at number one, I thought I would go with one of the more recently added easy to get mounts, and those are the three Marsh Hoppers. 
These mounts can be obtained by simply finding the vendor in Nazmir, who is located at this spot on the map. Once you find him, he has three frog mounts available. But here's the catch. They're kind of expensive. Each mount costs 333,333 gold. So in order to obtain all three of them, you need to spend around 1 million gold total. Which isn't exactly an easy thing to do. For the amount of gold you spend on buying one of these frogs, you can buy enough tokens to purchase a mount from the cash shop. But also, these frogs aren't ridiculously expensive like the auction house mount, or even the mad merchant mounts, which all cost over 1 million gold each. So I thought these kind of fit this list. They're kind of expensive, but not unreasonably so. I personally only bought one because they're all the same mount, just different colors. So you don't really need more than one, unless you're really rich or want to fill out your collection. Alright, and that's it for the top 10 easiest mounts to obtain, part 2. If you know of any other easy to obtain mounts that aren't random drop chance, that's kind of the only criteria for this list. I won't list any mounts which require you to go into a raid and kill a boss, and only have a 1% chance to get. So if you know any other mounts similar to the ones from this list or the previous one, I'd love to hear about them and maybe make a part 3.